Hey everyone, so we're on genetics day. Okay, we're on genetics day five. All right, so aim. How do DNA and RNA assist in protein synthesis? Right. So we know that DNA and RNA are both. They both store genetic information. Info. We. It's the blueprint for making proteins, right? And going from DNA to mRNA equals transcription, okay? Well, protein synthesis, we've heard of this before. So it literally means making proteins, proteins, right, the building blocks, shorten BB, amino acids, right, happens at the ribosomes. And the template that's used is mRNA, uses mRNA. All right, and we're going to explore what all of this looks like, no worries. Um, okay, so Number one of the do now, it says if 15% of a DNA sample is made up of thymine, which is T, which percentage of the sample is made up of cytosine, which is C, okay? So according to our base pairing rules, A always bonds with T. Whoa, whoa, I don't know what just happened. A always bonds with T and C always bonds with G. So if they told us that T equals 15%, then that means automatically, since A bonds with it, that needs to equal 15%, right? Percentages are always out of 100. So 15 plus 15 equals 30. 100 minus 30 will give us whatever percentage of DNA we have left, which is 70 right? Now, because we still have two bases left, C and G, in order to figure out, and we know that whatever their percentages are equal, because they always are bonded to each other, we have to do 70 divided by 2 to get the percentages of each of them, which is 35 and 35 percent. So to answer the question, the answer is B, 35 percent, all right? That is a math question. We had this as like one of the questions yesterday too. Chromosomes can be described as large molecules that only have one function, maybe. Folded chains of bonded glucose, nope, no glucose. Reproductive cells, nope, they're not cells. Coiled strands of genetic material, that could be true because we know that DNA is coiled up inside of the nucleus in those X structures called chromosomes. So the best answer here is D, coiled strands of genetic material, DNA. Okay. Part A, RNA to protein. So let's, let's read. So far, the genetic information stored as base sequence has moved from the nucleus to the cytoplasm by using RNA. Another problem remains, how to use the nucleotide base sequence in the RNA to build a protein with the correct sequence of amino acids. This problem involves using a change of language, quote unquote, from the base sequence language of RNA into the amino acid language of proteins. This process is called translation and it, all, and it occurs at the ribosomes, okay? So let's continue reading. Built into every living cell in the world is a genetic code. It is called a triplet code. Each different combination of three bases makes up a word called a codon. Each codon, represents a specific amino acid, okay? Each of the 20 amino acids has at least one codon and most will have more than one. This genetic code is universal. In other words, all organisms on earth use the same genetic code. This is why we're able to take DNA from one 
organism and put it into another one without really kind of disrupting too much or disrupting a lot, right? Because they all share the same language. For example, the codon GCA stands for the amino acid alanine in uh, all life forms from bacteria to trees to human beings. This similarity among organisms is good evidence that all organisms evolved from a common ancestral life um, in Earth's distant past. So we know that because we all share the same genetic language, which is DNA, all organisms on Earth share DNA, that uh, we evolved from some type of common ancestor way back when. That's kind of evident at this point, okay? And no, you will not have to memorize these amino acid sequences or memorize anything like that. But let's look at what translation means, all right? So what is translation in terms of protein synthesis? Well, translation is going from that mRNA language into protein, to that protein amino acid language, right? We're gonna be able to translate those mRNA codons on that mRNA strand, and it's gonna be able to help us build our proteins, which are made of amino acids. What is a codon? So a codon is a triplet code. Right? Uh, three, a three base sequence. How is the genetic code universal? All organisms use the same genetic code. Okay, so if we look at the translation depiction next to 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 this uh, reading, right? Translation. Let's kind of decipher what's actually going on here. This is all taking place in the ribosome, all right? So the place that is taking place is the ribosome where protein synthesis occurs. Now we're gonna explore how that occurs. Each of these three, we have our mRNA strand, which is labeled for us, and it's broken up into threes, or it should be broken up into threes. I'm gonna see if I can actually divide it by threes for you. Okay, so it's broken up into threes. All right, hopefully you guys can kind of see that. If you guys notice, each one of these tRNA, tRNA equals transfer RNA. And on the tRNA, it carries a specific amino acid. So each one of these tRNAs, these small little blobs that are carried on it, based on their, their own three base language, it's going to be able to carry which amino acid needs to link where. And then as you can see here, you have a growing chain of amino acids, which is eventually going to be the protein. That's really all it is, right? It's gonna use the mRNA as a template to know like what it needs to do. And much in the same way that if you were building an entertainment system and it had all those different pieces, all those different pieces can't just go anywhere, right? They have a specific function and they need to be in a specific place at a specific time in order to get your end product, which is the entertainment system. So what do you use in order to know how to build the entertainment system? You use, um, you use the, 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 the little pamphlet that comes in like the pack and it kind of tells you like what each piece actually is. Now, sometimes if you look at those pieces, those pieces might be labeled like, oh, G6, G5, G4. That's one language. We don't really speak like that. We don't say, hand me the G2, right? We'll say, hand me the screw or hand me, you know, that type of thing. But those are all linked to a certain piece, right? Same thing that's happening here. These tRNA molecules are carrying a certain piece. It's all linked. 
And it's going to use that mRNA code to say, okay, these ne this next triplet code, it needs this amino acid, it needs that amino acid. Those amino acids are going to start to link until the mRNA sequence is completed, and then that protein will fold into whatever it needs to fold into. Okay, so that's how proteins are actually made. The so part B, protein synthesis notes. Okay, so if we're going from DNA to mRNA, we already spoke, that's called transcription. That mRNA is going to leap through the nuclear pore and it's gonna go to the ribosome where that mRNA is gonna be translated into uh, a certain protein of a certain sequence, that's called translation. So transcription and translation, okay? That's what's actually being depicted here as well. So the mRNA code, the mRNA code is for all life. The mRNA code provides the strongest support for a common origin of all life. And the code has duplicates. Okay, so several um, codons code for each amino acid. Whoa, I don't know what just happened. Several codons for each amino acid. Okay, this is for mutation insurance. What does insurance mean? Whenever you hear health insurance or you hear car insurance, house insurance, business insurance, anytime you hear the word insurance, it's a backup, right? So if something goes wrong with a specific letter where maybe the letter was accidentally deleted or it was substituted or there, it was added in between somehow, sometimes, most of the time, it won't affect the, the protein, but sometimes it can be lethal where you're making something that you're not supposed to be making based on that code being deleted or being added in or substituted for a different letter. But because of this insurance, sometimes even if there's a switch in, in a letter or something, it'll be very silent because it still codes for whatever was supposed to be there anyway, right? So it's a backup, all right? The start codon, is methionine. So if you look at the codon chart, the start codon is met or start methionine. You don't need to actually know that, but um, the stop codons are UGA, UAA, or UAG. Okay, so mRNA to protein equals translation. And I'm going to break down how to actually speak about this. So mRNA, so mRNA to protein equals translation. Okay. So the working instructions are the mRNA molecules, right? That the single stranded mRNA. The reader is the ribosome. The transporter is the tRNA or transfer RNA. So the mRNA are the working instructions. That's the blueprint. That's what's gonna tell us like, this is how you make the protein. The reader, the ribosome is going to scan through the entire mRNA molecule and it's going to shimmy over the tRNA. Hey, I needed this. Hey, I needed that. Those tRNAs are going to say, aye, aye, captain, and they're going to transfer or transport those amino acids according to the, the, the instructions of the mRNA molecule that the ribosome is calling over. Okay. All right. So. Part C, making sense of it all, it says, in your own words, describe the process of protein synthesis must include the following words. You guys are going to do this on your own. Do on your own. But I am going to show you how to use this universal genetic codon chart. OK? So we have first base on the side, second base at the top, third base on the right. Right? So if you look at the first base, it says U, 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 right? First base, I'm going to do it in red, U. Second base at the top, U. 
third base over here, U. That's our codon. Now, if we have U, U, U somewhere, then that tRNA knows, okay, I need to bring PHE, which is phenylalanine. You don't need to actually know the name of it, uh, but you need to know that it's actually bringing that, okay? That's how you're gonna read all of these. If we wanted to bring uh, uh, a SER, right? Or sorry, let's say um, your codon was AAG, right? You would look for the A um, from the left. You look for an A at the top and then you will look for a G on the right. I found my AAG over here and that's gonna code for LYS. That's the amino acid. So what's in bold are the amino acids, okay? What's in the non-bold, those are the codons that code for those amino acids. And that's really it, okay? So make sure that you do your exit ticket, write down any questions in your margins that you might have about this, because this is very dense, but just write down any questions that you might have and tomorrow we'll answer them, all right? You guys are amazing. All right, everybody, I'll see you tomorrow, bye.